You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I've brought back my brother Chris Reynolds to talk a little bit today. We are going to talk about the tyranny of the urgent. And there's some cool history to this, but we want to get right to the meat of the subject. And ultimately, the argument is that the urgent is often the enemy of the important. And Eisenhower talked a lot about this during World War II. And so you often hear about the Eisenhower matrix. You can look that stuff up. There's some great articles on art of manliness and whatnot. But essentially, everything that we do in life can fall into one of four categories. And those categories are they could be not urgent, not important. They could be urgent and not important. They could be urgent and important. Or they could be not urgent and important. And usually the not urgent and important is the most important stuff. And the argument is that most people spend their time in the first three of those categories and almost never spend any time or certainly not nearly enough time in that final category. So you and I wanted to kind of walk through each four of these. So let's start with that first category of things that are not urgent and not important. What do those things look like to you? And then how do we address those? Yeah, I mean, I think that not urgent, not important is a giant bulk of what a lot of people do. And I think a lot of that is simply wasting time in places that are easy to waste time in. So You know, I'm not going to say that social media is particularly a terrible technology, although I've got some feelings that are probably in that direction. I would say that spending your time scrolling through Instagram for hours and hours and hours would be an example of not important, not urgent. Yeah. And I know that a lot of time for many people is going places like that. I know TikTok is kind of a new thing. And any place where you're spending an inordinate amount of time that is literally both not important and not urgent, not helping you in any way, shape or form, in some ways, even detracting from, you know, your life certainly, certainly is in some ways, those things should simply not be done. Yeah. Social media is the easiest one to talk about for adults. And I certainly do think that there are times when social media can be used in positive ways, but continual scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok specifically those three, and I actually think Twitter is the one that could potentially be used for the greatest good, although most people probably don't do that either. Those are big time wasters that are not urgent, not important, but so are things like video games. And again, there will be people that argue that video games help them create a relaxation state. And so I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that all video games are absolutely evil. That's not at all what I'm saying. But if you look at your life and say, well, like, what are the things that are important to me? Most of you that play video games would say that's actually not really important. For some people, it might just be like binge watching Netflix, right? Especially if it's not things that are important at all. And so the question is, how do we address that quadrant of not urgent, not important? Well, I mean, I think the first is simply to make sure that you are doing the other things, right? So I think as you move through the quadrant and you are focusing your attention on other things, there's simply not time for that. Yeah, You have to put some mental attention to work there as well, which is noticing, and we'll talk about this in another podcast, but noticing that you're doing it. But then also there's another facet of it, which is noticing its effect on you. I don't know a single person who scrolls through social media stuff. You know, I'll use Instagram as the example, as I think it's probably still still probably one of the biggest ones people just scroll through constantly. You don't get to the end of one of those sessions and feel great about yourself. I feel like you really spent a lot of good quality time on Instagram. So I think, you know, noticing is one that sort of interrupt the flow of what you're doing. And then also, if you are spending time on the other things, then you don't have time for the first one. Yeah, for me, it's just it was very simply like I just made a list one day. I was literally on vacation and I made a list. I put everything I did in one of these quadrants and then I tried to purge all of the things that were not urgent and not important for my life. I'm almost completely off social media. It's been one of the best things I've ever done. I don't play video games. We don't own one in my house. You know, so all of those things have kind of gone the wayside. All right, moving on to the next one. The next quadrant are things that are urgent, but not important. And so these could be things like you live in a decent subdivision and your grass is getting tall and it needs to be mowed. Urgent, not important, right? phone calls that come in, right? You get a phone call that comes in from somebody that you don't want to talk to and isn't important. The phone is ringing 
it's urgent because you need to answer it, except it's not important. And so I don't, do you have other? Sure. I mean, like cleaning house is a classic example. I think the other one that I've got to call out and <laughs> people are not going to like this is there are a whole host of social organizations that can suck an enormous amount of time from your life and add zero value. Sure. Now, some of them do add value, but some don't. And I've had a lot of business colleagues that have told me that they've been involved in various business groups or whatever. And some of those may be very valuable. You know, if you're talking to somebody who has a similar job to you, that's great, but you've got to evaluate those things. Are they really adding value? Or are they just sucking your time? Yep. I get a ton of emails now because of the business from, especially from like listeners of the podcast listeners of the podcast, or often I'm amazed at how many clients or people within the business will sort of like jump part of the hierarchy and like, I'm just going to email Matt and be like, Hey, my credit card's expired. Can I update my credit card? And I'm like, I don't do that. Right. And so for me, the things that are urgent, but not important, I really do one of two things. I delegate or I automate almost always those things. That's exactly right. That's exactly what you have to do. And I think when people start doing that, they notice how much additional time and joy they've got because those things don't ever bring joy to your life either. Now, admittedly, I will say for people who are not of means, it's a little more difficult sure. because you do have to be able to pay, for example, to have somebody mow your lawn or every so often to come sort of do a deep clean on your house or whatever. And maybe those aren't the things for you, but you know, it's a huge deal to be able to automate or outsource that section of your life. Those sets of things should always be handled that way. I'll give you a, one that's impacted my life, probably the greatest in the last few weeks. It's like completely changed everything for us. Walmart started delivering groceries to my house. So I don't go grocery shopping anymore. You know how long it takes to order your groceries online, especially when it has your previous order? You just buy the same groceries every week. We get the same Fairlife milk. We get Santita tortilla chips. We get cilantro and limes and we get this type of meat. It's all the same thing. And so you literally just scan through the order. I don't need this. I don't need this. I need to add this. I need some toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I need some Harry's razors. And I don't go grocery shopping anymore. When we moved up here, that was probably one of the greatest things that happened. We live in the Boston area and they have Instacart up here yep. for any grocery store, essentially, or, or many of the grocery stores. And it really was a huge deal to not have to go to the grocery store. I mean, it takes a huge amount of time and it's definitely an example of something that is urgent. You got to eat, but totally unimportant. Yep. Absolutely. So the third quadrant, we start getting into the things that are important. And we'll start with the ones that are urgent and important. And so for me, these are things like I have emails that need to be answered every day. I have client videos that need to be broken down every day. I've got a bunch of online clients still that I coach. Payroll must be done by this date. Like all those sorts of things, right? Like work things for me are a big part of that. Do you have some of those that you would, now that we mentioned in your interview, but you're retired. So you have less of those things now than you did even six months ago. But what are some of those things that are urgent and important for you? I mean, I have dramatically less than I used to have, but those things aren't far from my mind. I certainly remember what life was like when I would wake up to, you know, a hundred emails or, you know, an emergency of some kind that was absolutely critical. Today in my life, there's a lot less that's an emergency, but there are still a lot of things I don't want to do that have to get done that I can't outsource and that I can't automate. And, you know, those things I try to dedicate an amount of time to, and I just get started. And I notice if I get started about two minutes later, I'm dedicated to getting it completed. I get it done and, you know, move on. Yeah, we can tease out the next episode I think that we're going to do on this is on the Pomodoro, which is our specific strategy for very dedicated, undistracted boxes of time that we use to tackle those very things. So every morning I get up super early and I'm not telling everybody that people don't need to necessarily get up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning. It's work for me. It's work for you. The reason that getting up early for me, and by the way, it's not white knuckle discipline for me. I just wake up, I set my alarm for six and it never goes off. That's basically what happens. I always wake up for my alarm goes off. But I get up every morning while my family still sleeps and go downstairs and I knock out all of the urgent and important things. So I knock out all my client videos first before I even pull up my email because the pipeline that pays the bills is online coaching for us. And I need to be able to sympathize with my coaches and therefore I will always be an online coach. So I do the online coaching. I break down all the videos first thing. You're one of my clients actually for Barbell Logic. And you'll notice like you can see the little timestamp up in the upper right hand corner of my computer and it's often, you know, it's 547 and I'm breaking down videos and then I answer all my emails second and I do those things before I do anything else, before I work on the business to grow the business. All the work that I have to do in the business and not on the business is urgent and not important. 
payroll, things like that. I tackle very first thing and I turn all my distractions off. No one is awake. No one's calling you at 530 in the morning. And so it's much easier to knock those things out in very specific blocks of time. I had the exact same strategy. And also, I would highly recommend the concept of not starting with email. Don't let other people drive your schedule. Wake up do the things you need to get done before you even look at email. Because the thing is, email is loaded with urgent, non-important. That's right. And so you really want to make sure working that backward. you, yeah, you're working backwards. You want to make sure that you're doing the urgent, important first. You clear that stuff out. Email is important. There can be important parts in email. And so I think tackling those after you've done everything else that's critical is important. But uh, yep. I agree. Your strategy is solid there. And that's the same thing that I did. The other element that you mentioned, which I think is really important in there is turning off the distractors. You know, if you're still somebody who has, you know, your phone beeps or buzzes every 15 seconds, you can't do anything. I mean, you are literally, it's a ball and chain to your life. So you've got to turn that stuff off, but it's an important strategy and it's a good way to get through those things. Yep. And that really opens up time for this last quadrant, which are the things that are not urgent, but are important. And for me, that looks like in business, that looks like working on the business, not in the business. What am I doing to strategize and further the business? Those things are often usually not urgent, but are very important. Then relationships for me is the other part of that, right? So building relationships with my wife, with my kids, being able to give them both quality of time and often quantity of time. Those things are both important to my wife. And then the final part of that is that pursuit of knowledge that we talked about in the previous episode. Reading books is never urgent, but it's super important. Like constantly pursuing knowledge for me is huge. Set apart as not urgent, but very important. And I want to have as much time as I possibly can devoted to those things. Yeah, I do the same thing. And reading is way up there for me. I mean, I sort of consider my job at this point to be reading. So I spend a lot of time in books Additionally, you know, I mean, spending time with your family is one of those things that when you look back, you've got to run things past the 90 year old deathbed yep. thing. Imagine that it's the end of your life. You're laying in your deathbed and you're going to die. You look back over your life. There's not a single thing that you would wish that you did more of that's in quadrant one or two and maybe not even three, although three supports four. So yep. it works pretty well relationships, you know, when you think back to you know, the way that you've been able to handle your kids and your relationship with your spouse, those are the things that matter, you know, in life in the long run. And so it's really important that you have time for those things. And the other one is just the self-fulfillment part to reading and learning and whatever part of life it is that you want to dedicate time to. Those things are also, you know, extremely important, but not urgent and having time for it is critical. And one of the most obvious things that is clearly not urgent, but very important to us is barbell training, strength training, working out, taking care of ourselves. Those things are never urgent. And the urgent things will often push that out of the schedule. If we do it incorrectly, especially if you think about things like what we eat, when we eat out of urgency, we eat crap. We go through drive throughs we eat for Absolutely. speed, but it's very important to us as part of our quality of life improvement, to strength train, to barbell train, to eat correctly, to take care of ourselves, take care of our bodies, and not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, all of those things as well are equally important. And so super important to us, but those things are really never urgent. It's so true. If you ever get a chance to read the book, The Power of Habit, it talks about how exercise is a virtuous cycle for the rest of your life. Yeah. You read better. You do better work when you've worked out. You feel better. It's fascinating. Matt and I both have just a little bit of kyphosis where our backs bend a little. Our grandfather, I think, gave us that. Thanks, Pops. And Scott's got it too. Yeah. Worse than us. But it's been fascinating to me. I notice my back hurting if I don't work out while I'm reading. You know, just sitting a lot reading. And when I work out, my back gets straighter. It feels stronger. I can sit and read for a longer period of time. And it just has an incredibly beneficial effect on everything else. It's just one of those important things that you have to find time to get to in order to have an amplifying effect on everything else. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to wrap up with this thought. If I handle those first three quadrants correctly, I am not just able to do the last one, the things that are very important to me and not urgent, but I'm able to be present for those things better. 
And when I don't handle those first three quadrants well, when I have things that are sort of breathing down my neck, I need to answer this email. I need to program for clients and they're not programmed. The car's out of gas. We don't have any food to eat and we need to go to the grocery store, not because we're broke, because we just haven't gone to the... Those sort of things make it so that I can't be present for the important things. You read and you've read three pages of a book and you're like, I didn't actually get any of it because my mind was on the other stuff. And so for me, we can't often do the things that are not urgent and important first. We often have to do the things that are not urgent and important last, but they're the most important, which means you have to do the other th three things well, efficient, cut out, automate, like we talked about, so that you can spend more time on that last thing, which is the most important stuff. And so that's really how we run our lives. It's why I get up early in the morning and knock out the stuff that has to be knocked out quick. That's why I automate things like groceries and pay somebody to go put gas in my truck and pay somebody to mow my lawn. All of those things I'm trying to do so that I can free up more time to do the things that are the most important to me. That's spot on. Cool. Guys, thanks for listening. And we'll be back to talk a little bit about the Pomodoro. <laughs>